Welcome to my steam engine playroom. Some useful new tools for the workshop, plus a preview to a small amount of sorcery and witchcraft, which features something that I've never seen before until recently. The parts that are currently on the bench are nothing to do with this episode, I'm just getting them ready for the next one. The small metal apple is very interesting indeed, but not as good as what you're going to see in the next episode. I've been doing a spot of online shopping. There are various things that are needed. Sometimes I'm prompted by viewers to buy things. For instance, in one of the boxes are a set of countersinks. The only countersink I had until last week was one that I bought about 45 years ago. The first item I would like to discuss, along with quite a lot of others, because they were very cheap, is in this box. These are side cutters. Why did I buy so many? Well, I want one in this workshop, one in my main workshop, and maybe one upstairs in the recording studio. The main reason was, though, they were very cheap. And when I look at one of them closer, the quality looks OK. In this clip, I'm comparing one of the new cutters that I bought with a standard side cutter. They both basically do the same job, but there is one important difference between them. When I've used standard side cutters on things like cable ties, here's a cable tie to show you what I'm talking about, the cut end of the cable tie is incredibly sharp, and I've cut myself many times. And that's because the blade area of a standard side cutter is chamfered on each side. To illustrate this, here are two pieces of cable tie that I cut with standard side cutters, and they really are very sharp at the end. Now I'm going to cut the cable tie with these new side cutters, and you can see the difference. They make a clean snapping sound, and the edges are not sharp. In this magnified image, you can see that the ends are quite flat. Very shortly, I'm going to be soldering a lot of LEDs into my traction engine's lighting canopy and these will be perfect for the job. It says on the handle, maximum 1mm diameter copper wire. Before chopping the cable tie, I fitted it to a small torch, and here, using the new cutters, you can see how easy it was to remove it. Very shortly, on the side rails of my traction engine, I need to solder 20 LEDs on each side. This is how I propose to do it. I'm going to push each LED through the side rails, but I will be missing out one set of holes, that way I get less LEDs. Then I will solder the wires on the LEDs to the copper foil that I've fitted, and once they've all been soldered, I will snip them off with these new cutters. I will not be making a video about this, because even though I trained as an electronics engineer, I received so many comments from expert viewers telling me I was doing it wrong, even though the original lighting system had worked perfectly for 13 years. None of the original LEDs blew, the regulator worked perfectly, and the main reason for changing them was I never liked the way that I wired them in the first place, and there were too many. While on the subject of LEDs, this was a Christmas present, and it's a really useful tool. It's a torch with an LED swivel head, but if you pull the handle back, it's a bar light. It takes three AAA batteries, and it really is good for getting into inaccessible places, even though the LED is a bit in the blue spectrum of light. Now for something completely different. This was given to me by my friend Andrew, who I visited in his workshop the other day. This is a very brutal and very sharp and very strong tool. It's a roughing milling cutter. If you're following the 7.25 inch gauge Sweet William rebuild, you will know that I didn't have the right size of die for the job I need to do on it. But thanks to a very fast delivery service from RDG Tools, here's what I need. A 9 16 by 26 threads per inch die. I also bought the same size tap set, and yes, they are carbon steel tools. RDG Tools did not have them in high-speed steel versions, but these are fine for the home workshop. There is a big difference between tooling for industry and the home workshop. In the home workshop, the tools get used far less frequently than they would in a professional environment. High-speed steel is better and a lot more expensive. When I look through the selection of taps and dies that I already have, quite a lot of them are carbon steel and very old. I rest my case. Here's a story so far. Now to move on to the next one. 
My one and only multi-bladed countersink that I've sharpened many times is getting a bit long in the tooth. I decided to buy a countersink set. These are supposed to be high-speed steel. It doesn't say high-speed steel on them, but it did say it on the listing on Amazon. Lots of different sizes, and they really were not expensive. I will show you how I go on when I start to use them in the workshop. This is a bottle of 3-in-1 oil that I bought to oil my friend's fairground organ, which has a Hammond L102 organ right in the centre of it. The Hammond tone wheel range really do sound good, and the tones are generated by revolving metal wheels in pairs on a geared central shaft, with oiling points that need oil once a year, and I always found 3-in-1 to be perfect for the job. When I was working in the electronics industry, repairing and modifying Hammond organs, as well as playing my Hammond organ publicly seven nights a week as a musician, I always used 3-in-1 to oil the Hammonds once a year. The original Hammond generator oil was very good, but later on it wasn't such high grade, and smelt more like diesel fuel. From my experience, this stuff is just the right viscosity to soak the felt pads in the generator and travel along the pieces of string to all the bearing points. The next thing to look at is something that I'm really pleased has suddenly appeared on the market. My friend Chris English, the son of Don English of Jubilee Fittings fame, makes steam engine fittings, just like his father and brother. But most miniature steam locomotives, when you get down to quarter of an inch thread sizes, use quarter by 40. These are, at last, quarter by 32 threads per inch. This is a Stuart 501 boiler and it's fitted with a Chinese check valve which is actually okay. But I'm going to change it for one of Chris's check valves then it will match the water gauge. Back onto the subject of countersinks. This was given to me by my friend Andrew. It has a tapered shaft and it has what looks like a hole through the middle. But if the hole does go all the way through this, which I'm sure it must do, it's blocked. The piece of solder stops very quickly at each end. Even if the hole does go all the way through, I do not have the facility to inject coolant down the centre of it. You may have heard the word serendipity. It means happy accidents. I ordered some parts from Blackgate's Engineering and they sent me the wrong size. But as it turns out, I need this size as well as the correct size. I saw one of these in my friend Andrew's workshop and I was really impressed with it, so much so I looked it up online and bought one. It's called a Neotech Level Box and here you see it in action in Andrew's workshop. In this clip we put the machine vise on a bar stool, so it's not exactly accurate. The thing you would have to do is calibrate the machine to your existing machine vise to get a zero. This level box is magnetic, very useful. When I sit it on my workbench, which was installed by a joiner who is actually very good, as you can see, it is level. And only when I move the box does it start to give me a reading. I don't need to explain too much about this, it's fairly obvious what it does. I'm trying to get it to go to 45 degrees, but it's really hard to hold it manually in the right position. Here are the details printed on the box and as you can see it's a very accurate device. To conclude this episode, it's now a preview to something unusual coming soon. And here it is. Yes, it's a spring, but I've never seen such a spring before. It's made of something called nitinol. More about this in the next episode. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.